Okay, let's continue with making selections and see how we can actually improve upon them. Here we have the Refine Edge document from the Chapter 2 folder. I already have it open and it is a Photoshop document as you can see from the .psd file extension. You'll notice in the Layers panel there are two layers. Layer 1 has the cat on it. If I hide that by clicking the Layers Visibility icon, which is a little eyeball, I can hide that layer and you'll see that our goal is to get the cat on the grass. We want to make it look as real as possible to make it appear that the cat was actually sleeping in the grass when we took the picture. So you can see the cat is actually on some sort of pillow and our goal is to remove that from the background and have our cat look like it's actually sleeping in the grass. Okay, we can start with our quick selection tool, which we used previously. And we can click and drag to get the cat. This is actually doing pretty well. And remember, if you want to remove part of a selection, pressing and holding the Alt key or Option key on the Mac will give you the minus sign. But you'll notice that the cat has whiskers sticking out. It has parts of his fur that are kind of fringy there and sticking out on the end. And it would be more realistic if we were actually able to get those items as well in our selection. So down here on the right side of our picture, you can see where our selection to get some of that fur that's sticking out and on his left ear and the area at the top of his head. You'll also notice that the whiskers haven't been selected either that are sticking out on the pillow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my tool down to the magic wand. We worked with that earlier and I set my tolerance to 5 so when I click on the whisker I forgot to hold down my shift key to add to my selection but that's okay because I can press command Z to get my selection back. That's control Z on Windows. I've got my magic wand set with a 5 tolerance. If I hold my shift key down I get the plus sign and I can add to my selection. Remember the plus sign adds to the selection and our magic wand is working on color and tone. The color of the whiskers is very close to that of the background, so I want to use a low tolerance. To help my visibility, I'm going to press the Z to call up my zoom tool. I'm going to zoom in on the whiskers. And then I'm going to go back to my magic wand and holding my shift key, I'm going to hit on the whiskers to grab up some of those whiskers. Now you can play with the tolerance to you know try and increase the amount that you're selecting at any given time. You can see there we got a pretty good selection. And remember if you want to remove part of a selection switching to the Alt key will give you the minus sign. Option key on the Mac. So if you get a little bit too far you can go back with the Alt key. And like I showed you earlier when I forgot to hold my shift key, if you get too much of a selection or you make a mistake on your selection, use control Z or command Z and it will undo the last thing that you did and put your selection back to where you had it so you don't have to start over again. So command Z or control Z is your undo command and it works during the selection process as well so that you can undo a bad selection that you just created and get back one step to your previous amount of selection. Now you can see this is going to take you quite a bit of time. So what I've done is I've actually created a selection for you that you can use. So I'm going to double click on my hand tool to get my cat back where it was. And if we press Command D or Control D, we're going to remove the selection and I'll show you how to load a previously created selection you have in your project files folder. Now if you don't want to load the selection that I've already created for you, go ahead and continue working with your selections tools to select as much of the cat as you can. So I'm going to do Command D or Control D to remove my selection. I'm going to go up to my Select menu and I'm going to choose Load Selection. Where it says Channel, if we click on that drop down menu, you'll see one called Cat. And I'm going to load the selection that I've created earlier and now we can see where I've actually added some of the whiskers. So I'm going to zoom in on that so you can see it. Where you can see I actually added to my whiskers and then I subtracted some of the space between the whiskers to where the pillow was displayed. And you'll also notice, let me go to my hand tool, you'll notice that I still wasn't able to get the fringe of hair or fur along his head and his ear 
and along this side here. So let me double click on the hand tool to fit my cat in the workspace here. And I'm going to go back to my magic wand. You'll notice that the refine edge button is available on the options panel. And that is available. Here we are with the quick selection tool, the refine edge is also available. So it's available on all your selection tools on the options panel. Let's click refine edge. That opens the refine edge dialog box, which will allow us to try and bring back some of that fur that we were not able to select with our other tools. There are a variety of view modes available. If I click on this menu, I can see what they are. We've got marching ants, we've got an overlay on black, etc. I can actually press the F key to cycle through those various selections of the view mode to see what these are. So you can see that pressing the F key is a lot quicker and a lot easier than going through the menu and trying to figure out what they mean. So here we can see the cat against the grass, which is our final destination that we want to place the cat. And it's probably a good view to use at times so you can see how much you need to make in your corrections to your selection versus the background because you'll find yourself some areas won't matter because the background's so busy you wouldn't notice it anyway. So I'm going to continue on with my F key. Here's the original picture and we can see where some of the fur was sticking out. Here's our selection that we created. Here's a mask and the shade of red area is the area that is going to be removed and the part where we can see really well and there's no tint on it is the part that will remain. So you can see here where we're losing some of the fur. Let's go ahead and work in this mode. This is our selection of our image on black, which is actually pretty good here with this cat. So what we're going to start with in our dialog box here is we're going to adjust the smooth slider. So by clicking the smooth slider, I'm going to drag it to the right, you can see where the edge of our selection starts to get a little bit more curved, more rounded edge, it gets rid of our jaggeds as it shows in the tooltip. If we go too far, we lose too much detail and it starts to look fake. So I'm actually going to bring this down to about, oh, let's say 35. I played with this earlier and that looks like a pretty good selection to work with with the smooth tool. Now over here next to our edge detection on the left hand side we've got another tool. You'll notice that we have our hand tool and our zoom tool. They work exactly the same way in our refine edge dialog box as they do when we're in our document. The refine edge tool, we have the refine radius tool and the erase refinements available here. Refine radius will allow us to click and drag to correct any of our selection. So I'm going to go along the edge of the cat here between his paw and his face and I'm going to try and clean up some of this selection and I'm going to try to add some of that fur that's sticking out. Refine Edge is really good when you're working with things like hair, trees, grass, anything with fine detail that might stick out over a background. That might be hard to select otherwise. So as I click and I drag, you'll notice that it's starting to bring back some of the fur. And I could probably go around the entire cat along the edge to try and find some more of the fur. So I'm going to click over here. Now if I make a mistake or the tool doesn't do what I intended to do, let me go up to the whiskers here and see what happens. You'll see my whiskers are disappearing. I can bring those back by clicking on the Refine Radius tool and selecting the Re Erase Refinements tool. So I'm going to click and hold. I'm going to choose the Erase Refinements tool. You'll see the little eraser there. And I'm going to come back and I can click and get rid of what I just did with that other tool to bring back what I had before. And in the case of the whiskers, I think what I had before looked a little bit better than when I used the Refine Radius tool. Let me switch back to the Refine Radius tool. Come here on his paw. Let's take a look at a black and white version of this by pressing the letter K. Here's the white on black. This is showing us basically an outline of our cat in a silhouette view, which will allow us to see if we went too far in. Let me switch back to my Erase Refinements tool. I could press the letter E on my keyboard, and I can bring back where I went too far in on the cat. I know I'm actually getting 
more on his body than just the fur that's sticking out. A little spot over here. And let's continue by pressing the letter F to cycle through our view mode. So you can see here where it's looking a little better. Now back in the on black view, we can see where we lost part of the cat's paw over here. And let me go ahead and get that eraser tool again and fix this area of the cat. I may have to switch between tools. Okay, let's go ahead and get to where we can see it on the grass. And here we've lost some of the cat's paw. You can actually see the grass coming through it, which is not a good idea. And I'm going to click and drag on the paw to bring back the paw and get rid of that transparent look that I had. So now you can see where the fur sticking out just a little bit on the cat blended in with the grass makes it look a lot more real. At the bottom of our Refine Edge dialog box, we have an options here for output. Here I can choose output to selection, which would then just give me my cat selected and then I'd have to choose inverse and delete. Or on the drop down menu, I can actually select a new layer. We'll talk about masks in a later chapter. So let's go ahead and change this to new layer. Let's click OK. And you'll see in our layers panel, we now have a new layer named layer one copy with our cat removed from its background. And below that we have the original layer one with the background. So I can toggle the visibility icon to see my before and my after to see how well I did on my selection. And that's not a bad job.